There are many additional details to Project Shadow from games after Sonic Adventure 2 that I purposely left out. Frankly, I think a lot of it takes away from the impact of the original story, and some of it even goes as far as to retcon certain things that were already established. So to keep the integrity of the original story intact, I'm deciding to keep it strictly confined to the events of Sonic Adventure 2 and end it at that. Alright, fine. We'll talk about it. Welcome to Chowmix. The events of Project Shadow span across several games, and in my previous video I'd only talked about the events told within the narrative according to Sonic Adventure 2. After all, that was the game that introduced us to the Ultimate Lifeform himself and laid the groundwork for his backstory. But this backstory would continue to be built up upon in preceding games, and at times, even retconned. And it's exactly here where things get a bit interesting. So if you haven't seen my first video on the subject, I strongly recommend you watch that before this one. Because in this video, I'm going to be talking about everything I purposely left out, and it all builds on top of what we talked about in the last one. So buckle up, because things are going to get really bizarre. So I should probably pick up where the last video left off. You might remember that Shadow sacrificed himself in order to keep his promise to Maria, using the last of his power to stop the Space Colony arc from colliding towards the Earth. He plummeted towards Earth and vanished, presumed to be dead at the end of the game. But come on, we all know Shadow stuck around after Sonic Adventure 2. Anyway, Shadow's next appearance would be Sonic Heroes, where he mysteriously shows up again. I mean, not even he knows how he returned. And that's kind of the premise of his whole character arc from that point forward. How did Shadow return? Did he miraculously survive? Is he a clone of the original? An android? Unfortunately, Sonic Heroes never answers this question completely. But don't worry, all this and more will be answered as we uncover some extra details about Project Shadow introduced in some of the subsequent games. So if you remember in my previous video, I explained how Gerald worked aboard the Space Colony Ark to create the ultimate lifeform, Shadow the Hedgehog. But before this, Gerald spent a ton of time researching different vessels capable of harnessing the power of the Chaos Emeralds to achieve immortality. That was the entire goal of Project Shadow. You might also remember that there were the murals of the Water Serpent and the Superpowered Hedgehog that Gerald uncovered and based the Bio Lizard and Shadow off of, respectively. But what if I told you that there was another thing that Gerald uncovered during this research period that would lead to significant events unfolding much later on in the future? But before we talk about these events, we'll need to go back in time for some context. 4,000 years ago to be exact. We all know about the ancient Knuckles clan from Sonic Adventure 1. I explained how they resided in the Mystic Ruins and were responsible for the mural of the Water Serpent, aka Perfect Chaos, in the last video. Well, they actually had a rival clan called the Nocturnus clan. The Nocturnus clan were rapidly overtaking land and eventually they'd run into the Knuckles clan, who were out there trying to do basically the exact same thing. However, this tribe of echidnas were much more technologically advanced than the Knuckles clan, and the two groups clashed with one another for power. The more technologically advanced clan would have the upper hand though, since they had the Gizoids at their side. What the heck is a Gizoid? Well, the Gizoids were ancient androids geared towards combat with the ability to rapidly learn and mimic the abilities of their opponents. And with an entire army of Gizoids at their side, the Nocturnus clan was able to mostly overtake the Knuckles clan. Desperate for more power, the Knuckles clan turned towards the Chaos Emeralds, but in their destructive struggle for this power, they awakened Chaos. The water serpent depicted in the mural, who laid waste to essentially their entire clan. The Nocturnus clan had no competition at this point, and would go on to conquer almost all of the planet. Almost. You see, the overwhelming advantage that the Gizoids gave the Nocturnus clan led them to devoting a lot of time and effort into researching them further. And this led to the creation of the most powerful Gizoid yet, Emerald. Emerald was created with the ability to harness the power of the Chaos Emeralds, and would go on to absorb all information on every form of combat and weaponry of its era. Needless to say, this Gizoid was incredibly strong. So strong that it caught the attention of a literal god and it was forced to intervene, sealing away the entire Nocturnus clan and every single Gizoid to another dimension for all of eternity. Well, every Gizoid but one. Emerald would somehow manage to remain, although sealed away inside of ancient ruins for thousands of years. Now, back to the events of Project Shadow. 
Allegedly, during the research for creating the ultimate life form, the lone gizoid was uncovered from inside of these ancient ruins and found itself in the hands of Gerald Robotnik. The android would be activated completely by accident one day while Gerald was studying the Chaos Emeralds within a close vicinity to it. It would become obvious that the android was built to harness the power of the Chaos Emeralds, a perfect learning opportunity to be used for Project Shadow. But the professor also noticed that it would mimic all of his movements, and after extensive research, Gerald would soon realize the full extent of its abilities. The professor eventually surmised the history of the Gizoid, and after realizing the danger it possessed, attempted to form an allegiance with it to keep its power under control. The Gizoids are programmed to form an allegiance or link with anyone who displays incredible power. So after feeding it information on some of his weaponry, the professor was able to successfully form a link with Emerald, and from then on, Emerald would listen to Gerald and Gerald only. Gerald was able to learn a lot from Emerald, which greatly aided in the advancement of Project Shadow. However, as we know, the attempts at making the ultimate life form took much time and yielded many unwanted results. The United Federation was getting very impatient and threatened to put a hold on the research. So in order to buy time, Gerald offered Emerald to them as a sort of bribe. After all, the fate of his granddaughter was riding on the success of these experiments. But Gerald was worried about the United Federation using the Gizoid for malicious intent. So before handing it over, he instructed it to cease absorbing any more new information on combat. With the Gizoid now in the hands of the United Federation, Gerald was allowed to continue his work on Project Shadow for a little bit longer. Emerald, just as Gerald instructed, would refuse to listen to the United Federation and absorb any new information on combat. They tried many things in order to override the link it had formed with Gerald, but nothing seemed to work. That is, until they equipped Emerald with a Chaos Emerald. Emerald's allegiance shifted towards the United Federation, who possessed the greater power, the Chaos Emerald, and they would finally be able to perform their experiments. All was going according to plan, but after absorbing an extensive amount of information on modern weaponry and technology, something in Emerald snapped and it would lose control, setting out on a destructive rampage and decimating a large portion of the Space Colony arc before finally being subdued. Gerald already knew of the Gizoid's destructive power from his research, and now the United Federation had learned of it as well, the hard way. With the United Federation not wanting anything to do with it after the incident, Emerald would find itself in the hands of Gerald once again. Gerald was to destroy the Gizoid in order to prevent anything like this ever happening again, but after many failed attempts, it was obvious that destroying it was not an option. So instead, Gerald turned towards reprogramming its AI. From this, the professor was able to give Emerald free will and emotions, and eventually insert a sort of digital soul based off of his own beloved granddaughter, Maria. With this new AI, Emerald's threat was greatly reduced, and as an added bonus, Gerald figured out a way to erase its destructive programming, but only after absorbing all seven Chaos Emeralds and then using a simple key phrase, bring hope to humanity, the last words spoken by Maria before she died aboard the Ark. After this final alteration by Gerald, Emerald would be sealed away. That is, coincidentally, until Gerald's own grandson, Dr. Eggman, would uncover him once again 50 years later. Frustrated by Emerald refusing to listen to him, the doctor tosses the seemingly useless android away on Emerald Beach, where he's soon picked up by Sonic and friends. The group is quick to befriend him, taking turns mentoring the android, and it would soon even go on to learn the value of things like friendship. Emerald quickly gains more and more sentience, picking up on unique traits and quirks from each character who befriends it. But out of everyone, Shadow was possibly the one able to relate to Emerald the most. After all, their very souls were modeled after the same person. Being at least partially a product of Gerald's creation, the two contemplated why they were given souls in the first place. What was their purpose? Were they weapons for war? Tools to maintain peace? It was up to them to discover the answer to these questions. And so, Emerald and Shadow would gather all seven Chaos Emeralds and speak the key phrase, bring hope to humanity, which granted Emerald complete freedom from his destructive programming. Or so they thought. Emerald would be sent to put a stop to another one of Dr. Eggman's schemes. But Eggman tricks Emerald into witnessing an incredible display of power. It's here where Eggman shoots an enormous laser out into space, completely obliterating a group of stars. With a display of power so immense, it causes Emerald's innate destructive programming to take over, and it goes on a rampage, hijacking Eggman's laser and aiming it directly at Earth. It seemed that Gerald's failsafe was a complete bust. 
not even his scientific genius could tame the wild power of the Gizoid. Left with no other choice, Sonic is tragically forced to defeat Emerald in battle, gravely wounding him. But Maria's soul comes through right at the end, and Emerald regains control over itself to say its final goodbyes to the wonderful friends it made along the way, before vanishing forever. The story of Gerald and Emerald is a tragic tale that fits nicely into the already established lore of Project Shadow. However, this next one is where things get really weird. But first, a brief word from our sponsor, NordVPN. Tired of being spied on all the time by the government while browsing the internet? Yeah, trust me, you don't want to end up like this guy with all your information getting leaked and whatnot. That didn't really, uh, end well. But lucky for you, NordVPN has you covered. NordVPN is the world's leading VPN service that values your online security by offering a ton of convenient security features. Connect to their super fast servers to mask your location. One super cool benefit this has, besides Besides the increased security is that you can use this to gain access to other countries' Netflix libraries. This means you can watch stuff not normally available in your own location. For example, the first Sonic movie isn't available on Netflix in the USA. But if I switch my location to Portugal, it actually becomes available for me to watch since it's a part of Portugal's Netflix library. But of course, there's also the security aspect of it. NordVPN keeps all of your information confidential. Be completely protected when connecting to public Wi-Fi. NordVPN double encrypts your data for added anonymity. And one of my favorite features, using the CyberSec suite to block annoying and malicious ads. God, I hate these pop-ups. And if you aren't satisfied for any reason, you can use their 24-7 customer support for help or get your money back within 30 days guaranteed. So try NordVPN today completely risk-free. Use the link in my description to get a two-year plan plus one additional month. Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video and making content like this possible. And with all that being said, let's continue on with the lore of Project Shadow. This is the story of the Black Arms, an evil alien race who secretly had a large helping hand in the development of Project Shadow. The Black Arms reside on the Black Comet, a celestial body that passes Earth once every 50 years. Commanded by their supreme leader, Black Doom, their ultimate goal is to punish humanity for their history of horrendous transgressions by taking over their planet and using them as sustenance. Some of the earliest history of the Black Arms can be traced back at least 2,000 years ago right here on Earth, where they created a stronghold in the Glyphic Canyons. This stronghold, also known as the Holy Ground, is capable of becoming airborne and firing powerful laser beams. The Black Arms created this stronghold for future use, when the time was finally right for them to invade Earth. So in my previous video, I mentioned how Shadow the Hedgehog was eventually created using what Gerald had learned from the Biolizard experiments, and then modeled after the depiction of Supersonic from the mural in Hidden Palace Zone. But in actuality, at least according to the game Shadow the Hedgehog, there's a whole lot more that happened in order to create the ultimate life form that we were never told about. You see, Gerald didn't just create Shadow with his own scientific genius all by himself like we originally thought he did. Gerald had some help creating Shadow the Hedgehog. Actually, even the Biolizard had a little help from behind the scenes. Around the same time Gerald was planning out the creation of the Biolizard, the Black Comet, which again passes Earth every 50 years, happened to be in the middle of its rounds. Completely stumped on how to make any progress with Project Shadow, Gerald made contact with the Black Arms and requested their assistance. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? The Professor explained the troublesome situation that Project Shadow was in, and Black Doom agreed to assist Gerald with creating the ultimate life form, even providing his own DNA which would help granted certain attributes like immortality and the ability to use chaos control. This was exactly what the professor was looking for. However, there was one condition to this deal. During the next passing of the Black Comet, 50 years later, Gerald would have the ultimate life form assist the Black Arms in gathering the seven Chaos Emeralds. What exactly did they plan to do with these emeralds? Well, they didn't exactly specify. Now if you're thinking this is sounding kind of iffy already, you're goddamn right. But being extremely desperate for results, Gerald was completely willing to accept this deal. Obviously, the Black Arms were up to no good, so the Professor devised a plan to secretly thwart whatever they were trying to do 50 years in the future. Remember the Eclipse Cannon? In my previous video, I mentioned how it was built with the purpose of destroying celestial objects posing as a threat to Earth. But little did we know at the time, it was built with a very specific celestial object in mind, the Black Comet. Gerald had no intention of keeping his end of the bargain. 
The professor built the Eclipse Cannon with the intention of completely betraying the Black Arms and obliterating their comet with the laser before they can even pay Earth a visit 50 years later. However, as we know, Gerald's plans were cut short when the Ark was raided and he was incarcerated on Prison Island. And with his utter disdain for everything and everyone at that point, after what they did to his beloved Maria, there'd be no reason for him to even warn anyone about the inevitable threat arriving 50 years down the line. If anything, the Black Arms invading and completely obliterating the Earth would be the perfect plan B in case his Doomsday program didn't work out. And if his Doomsday program did work, he'd totally be screwing over the Black Arms at the same time. No Earth equals no Chaos Emeralds. Two birds with one stone. Of course, we all know that Gerald's plan to destroy the Earth fails because of the heroic actions of Sonic and Shadow at the end of Sonic Adventure 2. But now, the Black Arms are set to arrive to Earth without any warning. And exactly 50 years after the deal between Professor Gerald Robotnik and Black Doom being made, the Black Arms arrive to Earth and immediately begin their rampage, starting with a full-scale attack on the city of Westopolis. Shadow, who's nearby and happens to see this all unfold, is approached by Black Doom, commanding him to collect all seven Chaos Emeralds as per their promise. Obviously, Shadow has no idea what this creature is or what he's talking about. And throughout the game, it's completely up to the player to choose who to take orders from. Black Doom, Sonic and Friends, Eggman, or Shadow can even forge his own path. And especially with Shadow being so confused about his own identity during the course of this game, it's the perfect reasoning for him to be just as likely to pick any of these options. But no matter what choices you make during the course of the game, there's a few crucial plot details to Project Shadow that we learn within the many paths of the game. Immediately following the attack on Westopolis, the commander of Gun itself accuses Shadow of siding with the aliens, regardless of the player's actual choice. You see, the Commander of Gun has a grudge against the ultimate life form. As a child, he lived aboard the Ark with his parents who worked there as scientists. He was also good friends with Maria, and they'd often play together while the grown-ups were hard at work. One day, after playing around the Ark with Maria, he stumbles upon none other than the exact moment of Shadow's creation. Black Doom, Professor Gerald, and a mysterious Black Hedgehog in a stasis pod. He sees it all. That was already a traumatizing event for the poor boy, but not long after, the Ark would be invaded by Gunn, killing his entire family and his best friend, Maria, in order to keep the entire project a secret. Why was he spared while Maria was killed? Maybe it was because she was trying to escape with the ultimate life form. Maybe it was because he was slightly younger and Gunn actually took mercy on him. But either way, assuming the young boy knew nothing, Gunn took him under their guardianship, leading him towards a path in life that eventually resulted in him becoming the head commander of Gun. And since that fateful day, the commander blamed Shadow for the death of his loved ones, and swore to get his revenge. The commander does eventually confront Shadow one on one, and after a brief battle, he realizes that Shadow truly doesn't remember anything from his past, making it difficult to sustain his hatred towards the Hedgehog. Because for the first time, he begins to feel bad for Shadow. They both lost everything on the Ark that day. Maybe him and Shadow weren't so different. We'll get back to the gun commander in a bit. But let's now talk about Shadow's identity. Depending on which route you take, you'll get an assortment of different answers. The original ultimate life form. An android. A pawn of Black Doom. The protector of the space colony arc. But what is the canonical answer? Who is Shadow the Hedgehog? Luckily, the true ending of the game shows us what actually happens. Shadow manages to collect all seven Chaos Emeralds. For whom did he collect them for? Well, it's ambiguous because of the open-endedness of the entire game. But either way, Black Doom steals them and uses their power to teleport the Black Comet itself down to Earth. The Black Comet, reacting to the Earth's atmosphere, then produces a gas enveloping the entire planet. This gas, which the Black Arms are naturally immune to, causes complete paralysis of the body, making it extremely easy for all living things to be devoured live by the bloodthirsty alien race. But because Shadow was created with Black Doom's DNA, he too turns out to be immune to this gas. He uses this as an opportunity to pursue Black Doom, and it's here where he learns this shocking revelation. The fact that Shadow was created with Black Doom's own blood. He too is technically part of the Black Arms hive mind. With the horror of this realization, Shadow succumbs to Black Doom's control. That is, until Team Chaotix manages to activate a pre-recorded message from none other than Gerald Robotnik. This message, containing the truth, is broadcasted across the entire world just as last time. The truth about the Ark. 
about the Black Arm's involvement in Project Shadow, about the government's foul play, but most importantly, about the Eclipse Cannon and its intended use against the Black Comet. The Gun Commander finally learns the truth about Project Shadow for himself. Gun, the very organization that he ended up devoting his life to, was the one that killed everyone aboard the Ark on that fateful day in a horrible act of corruption. And as for Shadow and Gerald, they were simply the scapegoats. It seemed that he was completely wrong about Shadow the Hedgehog this whole time. Shadow was humanity's last hope. And with this, Shadow regains his footing, breaking free of Black Doom's control, causing Black Doom to flee and leave the Chaos Emeralds behind. With all seven Chaos Emeralds, Shadow is able to use them to activate his super form once again. Black Doom reveals his true form, Devil Doom, and the two face off in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Mustering up all of his strength, Shadow battles one of the very beings who created him. And during this battle, Eggman confirms that Shadow is not an android or a clone, but the original that we've come to know from Sonic Adventure 2. Shadow, can you hear me? This might be the last chance I have to speak to you, so everyone thought you died during that horrible incident. But I rescued you with one of my robots. You lost your memory, that's all. You really are the ultimate life form my grandfather created. With Shadow fully understanding his true purpose and who he really is, he defeats Devil Doom, uses Chaos Control to move the Black Comet directly in front of the Space Colony Arc, and fires the Eclipse Cannon point-blank into it. This destroys the Comet, and with it, the entire Black Arms species to extinction. Shadow, with the reassurance of Professor Gerald Robotnik, was once again able to fulfill his promise to Maria, to bring hope to humanity. The lore of Project Shadow might be the plot point with the largest continuity in the entire series. With several games adding extra details since its telling from Sonic Adventure 2, it's only natural that it would become more and more complicated. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially considering that some of these additions turned out to be pretty cool. But I won't lie and say that some of it didn't feel a bit shoehorned for plot convenience. Nevertheless, I hope that this video helped explain the rest of the Project Shadow lore. Hey everyone, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you liked it, leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more content similar to this. In the comments below, let me know what you think of the additional lore of Project Shadow. Are they good additions or do they go a bit off the deep end? And to take that discussion even further beyond, make sure to join our community discord. I'll leave the link to that in the description. And last but not least, you know I gotta thank my amazing channel members. You all are absolutely awesome and make content like this possible in the first place. If you'd also like to become a channel member for only $2, along with getting some pretty awesome perks, press the join button beneath this video or the channel membership link in the description for more details. And with all that being said, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. Peace.